how are you? Good, how are you? Thanks Thank for joining you for, us. Thank uh, you for having me here. Yeah, this of is course. Awesome. Um, we use Slack like it is our business uh, at Looker. Um, and so we thought you would be a great person to talk to about how data is being used in, in enterprises that are growing really fast and, um, and that are really sort of at the cutting edge. So how long have you been at Slack? I've been at Slack about 15 months. OK. Um, and what, was, what were things like when you got there? I'm sort of curious. What was the base state before uh, things started moving? Yeah. Um, oh, can you hear me? Uh, we're working <laughs> on it. Yeah, all right. Um, so when I got to Slack, uh, data was built from the product team. And so there's a lot of people that know SQL. We have a lot of smart engineers. And um, we supply data very well. And as we thought about how we were growing, we thought about let's, we're going to be building, we're going to be increasing 10 times the size we are in five years. And SQL's not the play that we're going to be in. So you to, thought to doing like analytics. a four week SQL onboarding <laughs> as part of everybody's, right. that was not new account executive comes in and it's like, great, we know you how to know how to sell, you know how to use Salesforce, now you're going to do four weeks of SQL training. That didn't That's seem right. like a great onboarding process. Yeah, that process. wasn't a great onboarding great, process. That makes sense. Okay, cool. So my first uh, thing I had to deliver was a BI platform. So really take a buy strategy, not build uh, internally anymore. We evaluated Looker and we chose Looker within I would say three months as, uh, as when I got there. Got it, yeah. I mean, and just to go back, like I think it's interesting, I, I feel like I've seen that pattern a lot, where the people who actually physically own the credentials to the data, they're served very well because exactly. they speak SQL and they have the credentials to the database. Um, and people who don't are kind of clamoring from the outside and going, hi, we could use some data too, and they don't really have necessarily a way to get that. Yeah, I love one of the first quotes from an FPNA manager said, we're finally going to level the playing field between the SQL <laughs> users and the people that don't know SQL. And, you know, FPNA, we shouldn't be hiring them for their SQL uh, yeah, skills, but really their financial analyst skills. And so this really helped us uh, with the level, leveling the playing field. That, with, that uh, makes sense. Two skill sets. Um, yeah, that, that is uh, a common pattern. <laughs> okay, so you selected Looker as, as sort of the tool that you're going to use and sort of what were you thinking about as you figured out how you were going to implement it, roll it out? What, you know, how much of it was technical implementation? How much of it was sort of change management? Um, how did that all sort of work together? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Because actually, the first thing we delivered was not a Looker dashboard. Okay. The first thing we delivered was something called Company Metrics, which is a bot that we deliver to all of the employees within Slack every single day. Can I guess how one accesses Company <laughs> Metrics? Email, right? No. Not email. Okay. All right. Yeah, um, of course. All right. Uh, Slack. Yeah. So right in our Slack yeah. channel. And everyone told me I was crazy. You don't want this to be your first thing. It has too much exposure. But go big or go home, I say. <laughs> and so, yeah, it, t it gave us exposure right to the executives. Our CEO is in this channel. He writes context around questions around measures in this channel. Uh, our FPNA folks explain what drops mean, um, how we change our goals, and so it's our direct connect directly to our employee base, and we can provide context with, with, um, with writing paragraphs and explanations with metrics. Every single day, metrics get, gets posted in there. So you were bringing data right into the workflow, the place that people were already discussing exactly. it, rather than forcing them to go log into another tool. Exactly. And creating the context so that people could have that conversation around data. Um, how did you, this, so this was powered by Looker's model or just powered by, how are you, how are you actually driving the company metrics? Yeah, it's powered by Looker's model. Got it. Absolutely. And so you weren't delivering a dashboard, but you were delivering data through the model right into Slack um, in a sort of predictable way. How did you think about trust in that? I mean, you, you said this is a high exposure place, yeah, right? Yeah. How did you think, uh, was that why people were warning you off that like if something was wrong, everything was gonna blow up? That's right. And this channel used to be managed by like PHP code and lots of, uh, lots of uh, unique um, ways to customize things. And Slack is at a place where we really need to build trust. Again, we've been able to provide data quickly, um, to anyone in the hands that knows SQLs, but now we're at this journey where trust is super important. We have unknown information that now we know how to define things, and we need quick metrics that we need to run our business by. So building on that Looker foundation and consistently providing numbers across dashboards, across Slack channels, across G Sheets, 
in Salesforce, you name it, this is how you build trust, is having the same number in every spot. Yeah, it's, I, I have seen too many times <laughs> where you go to one place and you ask for a number and you get yeah. one number and then you go yeah. to another place, ask for the same number, and they don't match. And that, when you lose that trust, it's really hard to gain it back. It's really hard to gain yeah, it back. Yeah, and I, I think, for, I, I don't know if folks know this, but I, I was a Looker customer for a long time and that was the thing that, that drew me. I was like, oh my goodness, we can define the metric once and then you know, put it wherever we need to and we'll know that it's always gonna be using that same definition. That's right. Um, that totally makes sense. Okay, so, so that was the first foray. I assume it went well. You still are, have your job. I'm still and, here. Yeah, I'm still right, here. okay. Yep. Um, so, uh, so company metrics and then where did you go from there? Um, well, we really focused on we were going public, so we yep. went public in July, and so congratulations! Thank you, thank you. And our next step was really um, taking our financial metrics and our sales information um, and bringing that to the field. And so again, we use metrics to run our business. Our we have to be really good at running our business, and so we thought these were the next two spaces. Since then, we brought in product usage. We have HR information. Um, customer experience, all of those are coming down the roadmap next. So really kind of ramping department by department, use case by use case, not trying to boil the ocean. I That's right. don't like that expression, but I'll use yeah. it anyway. Not trying to boil the ocean, but, but picking off the most important use cases, tackling them, making sure you get them right, and then move to the next one. That's right. And what's going to happen is we're going to be building these verticals. We're going to build schemas and data uh, stories around sales. We connect sales with marketing. We make that handoff well. We don't let sales build their own MQL and marketing build their MQL and then have a discussion about why our numbers don't but match. But it's so fun to watch <laughs> sales and marketing fight over the right <laughs> definition of MQL. I mean, as an outsider, it's kind of, yeah, you know, I, battle royale. One, uh, two enter, one emerges. It sucks versus, as a data person. Yeah. I feel like you're just repeating and duplicating work. Yeah, and so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, finance and HR are the same way. They all talk about headcount. We don't want them to be talking about these things in different ways. So we'll be building these data models and presenting them in a way that makes sense to both users. And then we'll create this harmonizing um, phase where we bring all customer data together and really tell that customer journey so that our salespeople and our executives can have the right conversation with our with our, with our uh, customers. Totally makes sense. Yeah, that 360 degree view yeah. of the customer where yeah. you're not having to go here to get this data point and here to get that data point. And that one we're not really sure about, so we won't include it because it's That's a little right. bit fishy. Yeah. Um, and so, I, I mean, the, I think the, the way that you deliver data in the very first case is really instructive, right? You, you very intentionally said, we are not going to introduce this new tool by telling people to come to the new tool and learn it, That's right. but rather by putting it in the place that they already are. Meet your users where they are. Are there other examples as you've continued to sort of roll out new use cases? Have you thought about how doing that can, can make it easier to sort of onboard people and get them comfortable with data? Yeah, I think that's a good question. I mean, um, traditional BI is that you send everyone to this app and they're going to find all this stuff. And with the proliferation of apps, we have data everywhere. And all of your users are in many different apps all day long. So our strategy is really to bring data to where people, people live. And Slack is, is one of those stories. We also talked to our sales uh, organization and understood how they have conversations with our customers. And so we've actually automated the data sets that we provide to customers in our EVCs, which are executive briefing centers. Um, and this has been phenomenal, uh, phenomenal feedback from our sales organization. And we'll show a little quick oh, video Oh, right, you brought, a, you brought a little video. That's can right. We, can we roll April's little video? Meet Jack and Sarah from our sales team at Slack. They're preparing for a contract renewal with one of our customers, Acme Corp. They want to use data to demonstrate Slack's impact at Acme. Sifting through spreadsheets and multiple dashboards, they spend a few hours figuring out what data tells the most compelling story. Once they've filtered the data, it takes more time to piece together a consistent visual story from scratch. All told, they spend nearly a full day on high-level data discovery. On the data and analytics team at Slack, we were determined to find a better way to enable our sales team. Introducing Midas Touch, a custom integration that delivers data-driven presentations inside Slack. Just like King Midas from ancient Greece, it promises to turn anything it touches to gold. Let's take a look at how it works. In Slack, simply type forward slash Midas. 
Click Let's Get Started and then search for the account you need. Midas Touch downloads aggregate data on the account you've selected and formats it inside a Google Slides presentation. When complete, you'll get a link to your presentation and a preview of your data. When you open the file, you'll find a unique story. The data is presented right alongside easy to understand narratives. The presentation contains templated talk tracks that provide additional context on how to interpret and frame the data. You can edit the content to fit your customer's unique context. You can also further explore the data to sharpen your story. Midas Touch is a win-win. It highlights how our customers can unlock more value in Slack, and it helps our sales org turn more opportunities to gold. King Midas would be proud. <laughs> it's kind I, of silly, I mean, right? No, I'm not. I'm shaking my head because, I mean, knowing how good Slack is at design and all that, I shouldn't be surprised that your internal enablement materials look that good. Yeah. But it's still, it's ridiculous. Like It's ridiculous. That's I know. Ridiculous. I think it's ridiculous. But this is, like, the most amazing thing we have saved thousands of hours from our, from our AEs and CSMs. We've only been live for about 25 days, about a thousand different um, packages have been created already, and we just get floods of feedback every day. Um, and I want to recognize Scotty right here. He's the one who built this. There's Woo! Been... <laughs> we're, we're at a point with technology where you just have to dream about it. It's no longer a technology challenge. It's how you want to build a data culture within your organization and if your organization is ready to do it. So. Yeah, no, that's... Uh, this has been amazing for us. I, I can imagine. From watching the video, I want to go use it. <laughs> I'm not even a salesperson, and I, yeah. I mean, so just to understand what's happening behind the scenes there. So you're using a Slack integration to trigger the build, to pull the data through Looker, and then insert it into templates into G Sheets, and then alert the person that it's ready via Slack. Yep. And that's amazing. Yeah. That's truly... I don't want to steal all of Sean's thunder, who's okay. going to be presenting after this. But what I love about it is that you're not just bringing people to traditional da uh, dashboards. People will just go there. And if someone asks you they need a dashboard to download data, it probably sucks, right? Yeah. Like, you're not really building it to download data. But if you can say, well, where are you going to put it next? Right. And they always want context. They just don't want numbers on a page. So having it in uh, Google Slides, you can change the context. You can build your story. You can change the data if it doesn't make sense. You can actually delete a slide if you don't like it. But it's all ready for you in, a, in less than two minutes. And it used to take them about four to eight hours to, to do every single deck before. I mean, and that's, I just think the, the sort of product building mentality that you're bringing to analytics at Slack is so needed everywhere, right? That it's not just about providing a service to people. They come, they make a request, you give them the, the, the data that they asked for, and then you don't know what they do with it. And as you said, it's probably pretty ugly, and they go show yeah. it to the customer because they don't have time to, to polish it up. And now you're building a product that is easy to use, that's exciting, that has its own enablement video that's very cute, <laughs> and right. uh, right. that, that is right there in their workflow, saves them huge amounts of time. I just think, yeah, I think that's exactly what we all should be aiming for, right, that, that, that goal. Yeah, that's right. I think that um, in an IT organization or a biz tech organization, you don't, you're not, uh, you don't think about how you're building a product for someone. And so we really take a persona-based approach, which means that we talk to users about what their role is, what, what do they want to achieve with the information? Um, what are their goals? What are some of the levers that they, that they can move with, these, with this data? We do not start with a data and fields discussion. I think that's the biggest mistake most of us make. Yep. We think we're data gurus. We know how keys work and fields work. And we're going to unlock the magic by showing them fields and dimensions and measures. Um, but Only really... the people in this room get excited <laughs> about that, that's the right. people that we work with not so much. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So you have to bring them data that tells a story right away. If you build a dashboard, it needs to answer a question within five seconds. And if it can't, you made it too sophisticated. Um, think about who your end user is and how you're going to bring them through their questions that they want to answer and get to them quickly and simply. Yeah, I love it. I think that, And I think that persona-based approach of somebody comes and says, I need this data. And you say, hold on. Before I give you the data, 
what are you actually trying to accomplish? That's right. Oh, I'm trying to show my customer in a slide deck the data that shows how Slack usage at their company has increased and how that's driven more productivity, et cetera, et cetera. Aha, now we, now we understand what we're trying to do, and then you on the data team and the applications team can come together and build something like Midas Touch to, to actually serve that need. Yeah, it's, it's, it becomes uh, a more fun job when you take that <laughs> totally. approach, right? Yeah. So you're not just talking. I hate when people come and just ask me about data, then I'm a data puller and I'm not a solutionist, if you will. Yeah. So um, yeah, meeting people where they're at is a much better, yeah. better, much better uh, internal feeling about what you deliver as well. I, I love it. Not Don't deliver data, deliver solutions. Yep, That's great. absolutely. Well, thank you so much, April. Um, everybody give April a big round of applause. Thank you for having me, Daniel. Really appreciate you can, it. You can stay here for a second while I just okay. send them off. Um, so we have a great day, too, for, for all of you. Um, we've actually got Sean from Slack is the next thing on the stage in 15 minutes, half hour. Um, and he's going to talk more about Midas Touch and how it was built and how it works. So if you want to hear more about that, I apologize to the speakers who are on the other stages, because I know everyone's going to want to hear. I'm going to come and hear about that. Um, we've got a great day, too, for you, full of great content. Um, and at the end of the day, we'll be back on the stage with the final keynote with Cal Fussman. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you.